Hi everybody, welcome back to our series of educational videos on the Tilt Lightsheet Imaging System. My name is Chris Downing, I'm with Mizar Imaging, and today we're going to talk about how the Tilt works. So again, we're set up in our basement office with our remote demo system. And our system is set up on a prior open stand. We have the light sheet generator. This takes a single mode fiber and creates a light sheet. The light sheet comes in effectively parallel with the surface of the cover tin. That illuminates our sample. And then the emission of the sample is then passed down through the standard microscope emission pathway. Our sample is mounted and attached to an XY piezo Z stage. So the sheet is held fixed over the objective and we scan the sample through the sheet. So the tilt can work with nearly any inverted microscope, any laser system, or any camera. As long as the laser has a single mode fiber as an output, it is compatible with the tilt. The camera is really more based on your application and will depend on what your temporal dynamics are and what sort of resolution requirements you might have. You can use basically any objective on the microscope. You could image with relatively low mag, like a 20x objective to image whole organisms, or you could use very high mag, high NA objectives, like a, 20, a 60x or 100x TERF, and study intracellular dynamics. And the tilt itself works with basically any imaging software. So the technology behind the tilt was developed in Paul Maddox's lab at UNC Chapel Hill. And it's called LIGHT, which stands for Lateral Interference Tilted Excitation. Before we go too deeply into that, it's important to just talk about the two different ways you could form a light sheet. You could have a cylindrical lens based system where you create the sheet using a cylindrical lens. So you take a you take a laser, you expand it, you pass it through a cylindrical lens, and the cylindrical lens will focus in one axis but not the other, creating a sheet of light. The other option is a GAVO a scanning based system. In the scanning based system, you create a single beam and you scan that beam through the sample, effectively creating the sheet by scanning. We chose to go with the cylindrical lens based system because we wanted to keep the power density as low as possible. When you have a scanning based system, the power density within the beam is necessarily much higher to maintain because the dwell time of the beam in any one spot is going to be much lower than in the cylindrical lens based system. So the one with a cylindrical lens based system, the one sort of caveat with that and the one potential problem with that is that the thinner you make the sheet, the shorter the length of the sheet will be. So you can have either a thin sheet or you can have a long sheet, but you can't have both. If you take a look at the graph here, if you wanted to have a sheet that was, say, two and a half, three microns thick, it's only going to be about 20 to 25 microns long, and that's not going to be really useful for most applications. So if you wanted to have a very long sheet, say a 250 to 300 micron long sheet to fill the field of, of most standard objectives, your sheet's going to be close to 10 microns thick. Again, not very practical for most applications. About the time that the tilt was being developed, a paper was published out of Ottawa. And what they found is that if they took, they took a series of multiple patterns of, of, of a light sheet, and they passed those sheets through a cylindrical lens. And what they found is when you have multiple sheets passing through a cylindrical lens at their focus point, they interfere. And by carefully tuning the pattern of sheets being used, they, they found that they can create a single sheet that elongates out. So the sheet that they create, if it's designed properly, is no thicker than the sheet would be with a cylindrical lens, but it's substantially longer, almost six times as long. So this is the actual pattern we used with the tilt. This is actually part of the optical assembly. And the dark spots here are the optically transparent portions of the mask we use. So you can see there's four sheets, two thin and two thick. And in terms of the whole assembly, the laser passes through the mask first, and then immediately hits the cylindrical lens and it's focused down from the cylindrical lens. 
And when you do that, you get an equivalent, you get four sheets. So you have four sheets here coming down to a single sheet. And if you expand that up, you can see that along the distance, the thickness of the sheet stays pretty unvaried. So you can get a relatively long sheet of the same thickness compared to not using the cylindrical lens. Here's another view of this. And again, you can see you have the four sheets coming down to a single focus point. And then again, at past that focus point, the sheets will then diverge. So it's this focus point of the sheet that gets positioned over the objective. And here's just another way of seeing this. This is, we put a business card in the light path. And as we bring the card close, you can see how the sheets converge together till it forms a single sheet. And then moves back and diverges again. Now remember, we want this to be able to work with any objective on the microscope, which means we need to be able to have the focus point of the sheet very close to the surface of the cover slip because the high NA objectives have a very short working distance. However, if we just, if we, if we kept the entire optical path perfectly flat, in order to ensure that none of the sheets actually have to pass through the cover slip or the, or the, or the microscope slide, focus point of the sheet is going to be almost 700 microns away from the cover slip. Again, that will be far too far away to be effective for using high NA objectives. So what we did is we tilted the sheet. We tilted the entire optical assembly. And this way, the edge sheet comes in parallel with the surface of the cover slip. So all four sheets can now come in in the same environment without having to pass through the slide and our focus point is still right at the surface of the cover slip. Because the angle is so small, only about 3.3 degrees, we're still completely filling the depth of focus of the objective so you don't get any shading or gradients across the objective. And this is kind of shown here. We start off with having all four sheets focused on the edge of a red plastic slide. Then as I raise up the sheets, you can see the first sheet the second sheet, the third sheet, and the fourth sheet trailing along come together until the focus point of the objective. So that's about it. Um, we'll have some more videos coming out soon. If you have any questions, you can always email us at sales at mysarimaging.com or go to our website, mysarimaging.com. Thanks and have a great day.